Neville Goddard, February 28, 1969 Believe in Him When asked, what must we do to be doing the work of God, he answered, believe in Him whom He has sent. That's all you have to do. Salvation is yours when you believe in Him. There is no aristocracy of privilege, and to believe that Jesus exists means nothing. The question is, can you believe in his story? He tells us he was sent, and everyone who is sent is Jesus, the sender. Those who are called from the world of death do not volunteer or choose the task. They are selected, called, incorporated into the body of the risen Lord and sent as the sender, and can say, He who sees me sees him who sent me. After incorporation into his being, the individual is sent not to tell that he has a large family, a lovely home, or lots of money, but that he has fulfilled scripture. When Jesus entered the synagogue, he began to teach, and those who heard him wondered how he had such learning, since they knew he was only the carpenter's son. They knew his mother's name was Mary, his brothers James, Jose, Simon, and Judas, as well as his sisters. Here we see a large family, and a man with little or no learning teaching the scholars of the day. He tells them that he was sent not to build a house or to tell others how to do it, but to fulfill scripture. Then, beginning with Moses and the law and all the prophets and the Psalms, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Not realizing that scripture was all about him, a normal man from a large family whose trade was that of a carpenter was called, incorporated into the risen man, and sent, knowing he was one with the one who sent him. I can't divorce myself from the being that incorporated me into his body. He sent me to tell you that, if you believe my experiences, you will also do the works that I do. If not, you will not do them, for there is no other way to salvation. Unless these mystical experiences unfold in you, you will never leave this world of death to live in the world of life. In Adam all die. In Jesus all are made alive. He made me alive, in him, and sent me to tell you of my experiences, for the need was great, and to say that if you believe me, you will experience them and be saved, as they are your departure from this world of death and your entrance into the world of life. I tell you, in spite of the fact that I have an earthly father and mother, brothers, and a sister, I am no longer of this world. I am from above, and you are from below. If you will believe me, you, too, will be born from above. Then you will no longer be from below, but will be an entirely different being, living in an entirely different world. Now, in the 16th chapter of Acts, we read the story of a slave girl who possessed the spirit of divination and was making a lot of money for her owners as a soothsayer. And when Paul came by with his associates, she said, these men are proclaiming the way of salvation, and she followed them for many days. This story is followed by the imprisonment of Paul and a mighty earthquake, which awakened the jailer, who, trembling with fear, said, What must I do to be saved? And he was told to believe in the Lord Jesus. To believe in a man? No. The Lord Jesus is only a pattern of salvation which is now encrusted with barnacles. I was called, incorporated into the body of love, and sent into the world to scrape off the barnacles by telling the path of salvation I have experienced. You may think that the few hundred or thousand people I have told would mean nothing against three billion people in the world, but I know a remnant has been prepared, and they believe. That is all that is needed. Having heard, their belief causes it to happen in them, and salvation story spreads once more, until those without vision organize and make a business out of it. Then it will once more grow barnacles and become a tradition, minus the spirit. In 1929, I did not volunteer, but was called. I stood in the presence of infinite love, who incorporated me into his body. I was sent as love the body of the risen Lord back to a physical garment which is fragile, to tell those who are equally fragile that God is their own wonderful human imagination. 
Many, knowing my biological background, my large family with its limitations, reject my words. A few, however, have accepted them, and to that remnant it will happen. So what must you do to be doing the work of God? Believe in him whom he has sent. I tell you, he has sent me. You may or may not believe me, that is your privilege. But I tell you, the experience so changed me that I have walked by faith in this vision through the mire of doubt, even when it came from my intimate circle. One is first called, incorporated into the body of love, and then sent. This goes on eternally until all are redeemed, for not one will be lost. Just as by Adam all die, so also by Christ shall all be made alive. This Christ is a pattern of the eternal purpose of God, for there is only one way to escape this world. The pattern begins by your birth as spirit. This is followed by the discovery of the fatherhood of God. Your spiritual body will be torn from top to bottom as you ascend into heaven and the symbol of the Holy Spirit will descend upon you to smother you with love, completing the pattern. Jesus Christ is not a man, but a pattern, which I have come to renew. To believe that Jesus Christ existed is not a belief in him, for he is the way to salvation. Now, once the ship is encrusted with barnacles, one is called and sent to scrape them off by retelling the story as something that happened to him. When I told my family, they could not believe me and questioned me, saying, Neville, you mean you do not believe in Jesus Christ? And I replied, I believe in him far more than you do. Don't you believe that he existed? Yes, but not as a man. To believe in Jesus Christ, you believe in the pattern of salvation of which he is. If you believe in a man, you believe in Neville, and Neville means nothing. If Neville was called and incorporated into the spiritual pattern of salvation, he is sent bearing the pattern which erupts within him. This pattern has erupted in me and I have told my story as I was sent to do. It is said that Jesus began his ministry when he was about 30 years of age. That doesn't mean 30 physical years, for he was not speaking as a biological man. Thirty years after he was incorporated into the body of love, he was qualified by the eruption to tell what had happened to him. He told his visions and pointed out their fulfillment of scripture, and some believed while others so conditioned to believe in a physical Christ could not understand. The splitting of God's temple is told in its symbolic manner in the 14th chapter of Zechariah as, the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west as one half moves north and the other half moves south leaving a very wide valley. It is told as a metaphor, but you are its reality. Scripture is all about you, and that splitting is yourself. Taken in a secular manner, David lived unnumbered years ago, but in the spirit, he will call you father. When I share my visions and their scriptural confirmation, some believe me, but the majority think I am sharing a fantasy, yet I still walk with faith through the mire of doubt as I tell my story. My background is known. I have no education, no wealth or social position, yet I do know that I was chosen to be called and incorporated into the body of love and scent. Love could have called a financial or intellectual giant, or someone handsome and wonderful, judged by human standards, yet he called me in the spirit. I was not initiated in the flesh, but was taken in spirit, for God is spirit, and those who worship him do so in spirit and in truth. It was a spiritual incorporation into the body of love, yet it seemed to be solidly real. As spirit, I returned to the garment I had left on the bed. It was that spiritual body which unfolded his plan of salvation. Now I know that this is the only way man can depart this world of death, and his departure begins by simply believing the story. Don't believe in Neville as a man, for he is frail and subject to all of the weaknesses of the flesh. Rather, believe in what I have experienced. I have unfolded scripture for you and shown you where my experiences were foretold. 
I have repeated this over and over in the hope that those who hear my words will believe them, for I have tied the gospel to its reality. The book of Acts, once part of the book of Luke, was detached for a purpose. The story of Jesus, the pattern man, is not found in the book of Acts. Rather, the story of the apostles is recorded there, for the apostles are sent to tell exactly how it happened in them. I do not know, however, of any part of scripture where the story is told as graphically as I have told it to you. In the Old Testament, the question is asked, can a man bear a child? Why then do I see every man with his hands pulling himself out of himself, just like a woman in labor? Why does every face turn pale? To us a child is born, to us a son is given. When a woman forms a child within herself, is that child not part of her body? And when she is in labor, does she not pull a part of her body out of herself? Primitive women did not go to a hospital. While working in the field, these women would stop for a moment and pull that which they had formed within themselves, out of themselves. This is exactly what I did. I pulled myself right out of myself. Five months later, I fulfilled the 89th Psalm. When David stood before me, I knew I was his father, as there was no uncertainty as to this relationship. I am telling you what I have experienced. Scripture foretold these visions, which must take place before you can depart this world. What must you do to bring them about? Believe in the story I have been sent to tell, for if you do, and set your hope fully upon having these experiences, your salvation is assured. Eventually, everyone will believe. Rejection delays the birth, however, for it comes only after acceptance of the story told by the one who was sent. I did not choose to be sent. When I fell asleep that night, I would have been the last person I would have chosen as worthy to be called into the presence of the risen Lord. The Beatitudes tell us that only the pure in heart will see God, and I certainly did not feel myself to be pure in heart. My wife and I were separated, and my little boy was moving back and forth between us. With the conflicts which go with all these silly little things, I would never have judged myself worthy of being pure in heart. But God does not see what man sees. God sees the heart. He sees the motive behind the act, never the outer picture. Was the thought brought forth in love or to get even? Was its motive to inflict pain or to express love? God sees the heart, and when he judges it as pure, that individual is called. In 1929, I was called, and for 30 years, I only taught the law. The promise was there in scripture, but I did not know it until it erupted in me 30 years later. From that moment on, I could do nothing but think about it, talk about it, and share my experiences of it, for that is what I was sent to do. My genealogy is known. My biological background, my father, mother, brothers, and sister, as well as my lack of education is known, yet it is all recorded in scripture. When I shared my experiences with my family, they rejected them 100%. My earthly father came the closest to understanding. One day a minister was at the house, and when he could not answer my questions or throw any light upon my visions, my father said, Son, you must be an apostle. My mother felt it in her womb when I was coming into this world, but she had no confirmation as I became a dancer and she had thought I would be a minister in the Anglican Church. But I tell you, this is the only way to salvation. Don't believe in Neville. He is not the way. I could go out with you every night and thoroughly enjoy matching you drink for drink. No food is distasteful to me, as I enjoy it all. I am told I am not discriminating enough, for I can find nothing to condemn. I do, however, admit to all of my weaknesses of the human flesh, yet in spite of that I was called and sent. 
At the time I did not know God's purpose, but after his message erupted within me, I knew I was sent to refresh the atmosphere and clean it up after centuries of misunderstanding of the Christian mystery. Christianity fulfills the promise of Judaism. Fulfilling the pattern called Jesus, we are gathered one by one into that one resurrected man, to be that one being in Christ. I don't care what name you bear on earth, you will be sent as Jesus. You will play his part and share your experiences with all who will listen. Do not elaborate, but tell them that unless they believe, it will not happen to them and they will remain in the world of death. It is not enough to believe only that Christ existed. That is like saying to a friend, I believe you exist. What an insult! The question is, do you trust Christ? Do you believe in him? Now I, a man, tell you the story of salvation as I have experienced it. Do you believe in my story? If you do, you believe in me, then forget all you hear about me as a man. A friend recently told an acquaintance the story of my experiences, then later mentioned that I had been divorced and had remarried. The moment the lady heard I was divorced, she closed her mind and could not accept the story that I was called, incorporated into the body of God, and sent to tell. She judged the outer man and could not believe in him whom God has sent. She could go across the street, however, and believe that if she only ate corn she would be saved, because the person who told her so wasn't divorced. I tell you, you can eat corn from now on, but you will still remain in this world of death until you believe salvation story as I have experienced it. I don't care what you have done or are doing, if you believe my story and set your hope fully upon that grace which is coming to you, he who sees your belief will call you and erupt within you. God sees your heart. He sees that you are capable of believing the incredible story of Christ and fulfills it. Ask the doctor who brought you out of your mother's womb to explain how the bones grew there, or how they were covered with flesh, and although he can give you reasons why they appeared, he cannot tell you how it is done, as we are told in the books of Ecclesiastes and Proverbs, who knows how the bones grow in the womb of woman. Now I tell you of another birth, which is greater than that which comes out of woman. No one sees this birth, yet it is real, for it is the birth of God. He is born out of this body of death and takes you with him into the body of life. It is not necessary to understand this birth, only to believe in it. So, what must you do to be doing the work of God? Believe in him whom he has sent. And what must you do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus, who is the pattern you have heard about from me. Then go about your business and live fully, enjoy life and all that it has to offer. A lady recently called, who had heard me many years ago in Detroit and Minneapolis. Although she and her husband had nothing, she believed what I said and imagined having lots of money. Her husband spent many years in different mental hospitals, depleting the little money they had, and then one day he took his own life. Her only brother was a very thrifty businessman, who lived frugally. He died, and three weeks later his wife died, leaving everything to this lady. Now she has the money to live in luxury, just as she had imagined. This lady assumed wealth, without knowing where it would come from, and now she has it. The law will not fail you here or in the world of God, for you must believe both stories. I tell you, an assumption, though false, if persisted and will prove itself in the world of Caesar, as it did in her case. I also tell you an incredible story, that you will awaken in your skull and experience a spiritual birth as described in scripture, for you are the one spoken of there. Can you believe both stories? If you believe one enough to test it, and it proves itself in performance, try to believe the other, for unless you believe both, you cannot prove them. If you believe the one in the world of Caesar, you can have money as this lady has. But you must believe the other in order to live where you do not need money, for there you know that the earth is yours and all within it. 
When you are incorporated into the body of God, you know you are God and everything is yours. Then you will tell your story, depart this world, and return to the Father who is yourself. But while you are here, where you do not know the world is all yours, apply the law of assumption. Assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled and let God's law work for you. Learn to believe the story on this level through application and one day you will believe the incredible story on the higher level. What must we do to be doing the work of God? Believe in him whom he has sent. Though born of flesh and blood, with four brothers and sisters, and a carpenter by trade, after the second birth he was no longer the man one knew, but an entirely different being. After telling you what happened in him, he asks you to believe it. If you do, you believe in the way you are saved. If you do not, you believe in and will remain in the world of death with its many blows. Hundreds of millions of people call themselves Christians and believe in the existence of Jesus, but they do not believe in him, for if they did they would believe his story. I have told it in my book, Resurrection. The story is true. I have come to bear witness to it. God incorporated me into his body and sent himself with me, so whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. You will never see the one who sent me by looking at the outer man. It is only the inner man who bears God's likeness, for that is who I am. Now let us go into the silence. <laughs>